from different places We all have different names No matter what life brings us Jesus is the same We're just your Methodist To the madness Methodist To the madness Hi I'm Beth I'm Tim I'm Jessica And we're just your everyday Methodist, Methodist to, to the, the madness. madness. Yes. We were almost in sync this time, but we're not aiming for that. Back to you, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're getting better for sure. I think this is now our fifth episode, which basically we're you know geniuses at this point. We're really mastering this and. Probably internet famous is what I'm thinking by episode yes. five. I think yeah. we're up to five listeners now. So at you least mean, you yeah. mean five million, correct? Five million. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot a few zeros on that. <laughs> yes. um, we we all were thinking that you meant the million, you just didn't say it. Right, right. I just assumed it was, you know, implied. Yes. Yes. How are you guys doing? How has your week been? Beth, I want to know if you were able to uh, focus on what you had intended to this past week with your health journey. So I did dip my toes into the health journey this week. I took not one, but two walks with the dogs this week. Um, One of them was after choir practice because it was such a nice day out. And I don't know why I said it, but I did because it was dark o'clock outside. But <laughs> when I was walking out with Tim and Kirsten, I said, I think I'm going to walk my dogs tonight. And then because I said those words out loud and two people heard them, I was like, well, now I have to go home and walk my dogs tonight. And, um, and then I took, sometimes I will say words out loud to the dogs, just, I mean, they can't hold me accountable like humans can. They can't be like, but, but you said we were going to take a walk. So I try to make sure if I say those words out loud, even if it's to the dogs, I, I, I keep my word. So earlier today when I was leaving, they were getting all like weirdly wound up and I was like, no, I have to go do some stuff, but I'm going to come back and we'll take a walk later today you guys yes (laughs) Um, and then I got home from running errands at about five o'clock and I was like oh wait it's the podcast tonight and then I was like oh wait I haven't listened to the sermon yet (laughs) and there were so many things that like I could have just thrown in the towel because my phone was at nine percent And I was like, I'm not going to probably be able to walk the dogs and listen to the sermon at the same time. But then I thought I would just try it like, oh, you can put your phone on power mode. And then I was like, but I don't I lost my headphones. But then I remembered I had these other headphones that go on like a headband. And and then I was able to find a charger. It's the charger I use for my VR headset but the adapter wasn't working to plug into my phone. So I found one that had the adapter that goes with the VR headset extra battery. And so I walked the dogs today and I listened to the sermon and any, like on any other day, any one of those things that I was like, oh no, but this, I probably would have been like, I guess we can't do it. But I didn't let myself do that today. And I'm going on, um, staff retreat, which I've never gone to before, tomorrow through Thursday. So I decided we're going to dip our toes in this week. And then when I come back from the retreat is also the same day that we get paid. So I'm I'm going to really try to commit to um, actually having healthy groceries and actually having some sort of a plan with meals. I believe they call them meal plans. But that is. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> you know, Beth, you started veering towards VR and the sermon. And I was just thinking how awesome it would be if you could have the opportunity to put on virtual reality 
what are they called? Goggles? Headset, goggles. Headset, okay. And just kind of have sermon in a VR experience. You can yeah. do that because you can watch YouTube on your VR headset. And you're and like in the church walking around looking at people and they can't see you. Well, I'm not doing, you no, know, it's not like that, but there was an app that uh, I used to use. And sometimes I'd use it with my family where I can't even remember what it was called, but we would all just all four be, we all each have a headset and it was like, um, kind of like a movie theater set up. That's, and oh we yeah. Really That's okay. the best. Each other and, and they, they had like. Sometimes the movies were really glitchy. If we would have to pause it for whatever reason, we'd basically have to restart it. And you know, it never oh, really okay. worked out for all of us at once. But when it did work, it was fun because they had these like cool little features where you could throw popcorn and rotten tomatoes at the screen. <laughs> so, so we watching a movie like <laughs> we just we watched Forrest Gump on the VR headset once and we'd just be watching the movie and then all of a sudden you'd see like a tomato <laughs> hit the screen. <laughs> it could be like a serious moment too. Like yeah, you know? <laughs> oh man. Hey, you know it's like popcorn and tomatoes at the screen with without the mess. You know that it, uh -huh. it's like a win-win situation. Yeah, and I would always try to see like how high and how far I could hit the screen. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Technology. Um. Well, I'm really proud of you, Beth. It really sounds like you you dug right in and you committed, and that's incredible. So hopefully this next week, that can also be something that you continue to expand on. And it also sounds like since you're going to be at the staff retreat, maybe you guys will be doing some walking that you can check off of your bucket list as well. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking about sneaking one of my dogs in, but I probably won't actually do that. <laughs> hey, I think that would work. You know, Stormy was already there uh, in lots of different church uh places so i i think yeah. it would be very acceptable in fact yeah. it, it'll be celebrated that stormy will be there he's for sure yeah yeah tim how are you doing update us on uh, how this past week has been okay so um i have a few updates uh i'm not sure what order i'm gonna go in so i'm just gonna go in some sort of order uh so i uh I did manage to start communicating with my brother a lot more and um, it kind of just happened out of the blue. Um, I had mentioned, I, I, I don't really think that, well, I guess it's okay that we're advertising, but not really advertising on this podcast. Uh, I started playing this one game called RuneScape, which is an MMORPG or massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Um, and my M -M brother... MMORP? Yeah. Yes, MMORPG. Yeah. Okay. I just yeah. remember N64. That's what I remember <laughs> growing up. So it's, it's gotten so complex. Okay, continue, Tim. Sorry. <laughs> no, that was great. <laughs> so um, I mentioned that I wanted to start playing RuneScape, and he's he, he seemed pretty enthusiastic at first in person, te text messages and stuff like that. I'm not sure where it was going to go. Well, anyway, I decided to log into the game, and uh, I don't really have a full on like plan in how I was going to go about it. Just inch my way in. So all of a sudden, some guy on the game was like, uh, trade me. And I'm like, OK, sure, <laughs> I'll trade you. Um, and all of a sudden, he just gives me all this stuff, like like one of the best armor sets and like some other like important valuables. And I'm like, thank you so much. And he's like, uh, can I give you any tips? And I said, well, uh, I, I just told him what I was going to do. Like, uh, I was, you could do this thing where you train agility and, and so forth. And they have this thing called um, members where you can pay a certain amount of money per month or you could play free to play. I was free to play at that point. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. so uh, I'm just going to do agility after this. Right now I'm making plain pizzas. And uh, I guess he was really like fascinated by my story. Uh, and so he felt like um, putting forward more kindness. So all of a sudden he just gave me a whole bunch of other stuff, uh, like 1 million gold pieces and, and just like filled my inventory with valuables. And so I told my brother this and he was like, oh, wow, I'm going to get on right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
<laughs> and so ever since then, uh, he and I have just been like spending a lot more time together and like we've been playing the game and like I feel like I'm really like enriching like uh, the relationship that I have with him. So that was like a really positive update. And he seems like he's doing well. Um, I think he uh, might have been a little bit off emotionally earlier, like a few weeks ago, but I think he's he's doing a lot better now. So that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is the delayed gratification thing. Um, uh, so I tried that for maybe a week. No, wait. Last week we did the podcast. So I think I really only tried it for four days or something <laughs> um, before finding out that it's really difficult to just like be uncomfortable for a period of time and then reward yourself. And um, by coincidence, I happened to see this video on YouTube um, and the name is escaping me now, unfortunately. But basically what she said was that uh, there's like two types of people, like two types of brains, you could say like type one and type two, where type one, they could just like get a to-do list and be like, oh yeah, I, I'm gonna do uh, item one, two, three, four, five, have to skip uh, six and seven, but I'll do eight. And then there's type two where uh, it's just chaos. Like you just basically have no management of uh, anything. If you do, it's it's, like spur of the moment and it's um, like emotional and all that stuff. Well, anyway, this artist, um, she went ahead and said that she's type two and um, the overall idea for her is to completely stop going with habits um, and basically work according to passion and desire and um, try to focus more on uh, harnessing that and like uh, strengthening that, um, that part of like um, operation. So instead of the more like neurotypical way of going about things, mm -hmm. um, I, I I thought this was really fascinating. And so I tried it and um, I think it actually has been really helping me. Um, and then uh, the next thing that I implemented was um, like a form of kind of trying to organize my ideas uh, regarding what I'm gonna do for tasks. And I think what helps now is for me to just sit down and like define everything that I'm going to do. Um, and then at that point, come up with like an affirmation associated with um, that task, like something that will make me feel good or just something straightforward. And so like use the affirmation uh, a few times until I believe that I can do it, like giving me that like emotional fulfillment that I can actually overcome um, whatever is preventing me from doing something. And uh, I tried this at work today. I worked a half day because it's a holiday. Um, and uh, it really helped me focus. So I, I've given up on delayed gratification. It's 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 just not possible for me, but it's, I think I'm doing fine, Tim. <laughs> I'm more of an instant gratification kind of person. So exactly, I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, the delay must have been really delayed. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to where I'm like, oh, oh, humdrum, you know, I'm just going to sit <laughs> and um, uh, sip my water, you know, and no activity. So, <laughs> Tim, sometimes I play a game I like to call follow the dopamine and I oh. just will do like <laughs> small tasks around the house. And I'm like, oh, I did that. And then I'm like, oh, what's the next thing that I can do? And then I'll go and do that. And I'm like, oh, I did that. Um, are those the things that I had on my to-do list that day? Probably not, but I'm doing something. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, just focus on that rewarding aspect. And uh, if we can direct ourselves, great. If we don't, then that's okay too. Like, But just living out our lives uh, in, a, in a passionate, like desirable way, I think makes every day like really doable. And like we can feel like happy in our lives, I think. Yeah. That's good, Tim. That's awesome. I love that you're able to connect with your brother through, you know, any form of connection. And that includes the gaming world. I think that's awesome. So I'm really that's proud awesome. of you of being able to do that. And I'm sure your brother appreciates that. So yeah, thank, thank you? you very much. Tim, I wanted to tell you briefly, my dog is barking. I'm sorry if you can hear her. But I just wanted to tell you, I used to play the MMORPG World of Warcraft. Oh, wow. And my <laughs> my brothers, both of my brothers were into it. And some of, and I had like some friends who were into it too. And some of my best memories 
were playing World of Warcraft with my family and my friends. And I'm actually, I played a lot when Owen was a baby. Like I would sit at the computer and I'd be nursing a sleeping baby and playing WoW at the same time. And (laughs) he'd be napping. I'd be, you know, leveling up. And uh, I actually joined a guild and got to know a lot of the people in this guild. And I'm still um, friends with them on Facebook to this day. And I think that's that's pretty cool thing to still be we don't really play anymore at least i don't but i still think it's cool to be connected to the people that i used to you know do gaming with yeah Yeah. what what a great way to share jesus with people through these i had to write it down mmorpg yeah Yeah. (laughs) share jesus with them though yeah Yeah. Uh, you're playing have you heard about the the good news (laughs) savior jesus christ (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, it, it is it is a, a way to share Jesus, even if we don't do so explicitly right away or even at all. Like we're we're sharing uh, Jesus light, basically. Um, yeah, it by, sounds by like providing, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Actually, wasn't the um, the saying from Stellar VBS "Shining Jesus Light"? I I didn't intentionally yes. mean to say that, but that was perfect. I immediately got the song stuck in my head when you said that. (laughs) (laughs) I like how you mentioned something, Tim, about, you know, working and doing stuff that um, I know it was more so like your your list of things and being passionate about what you're doing. And just to kind of update my end of things, I feel like God has completely softened my heart and how I feel towards my job and um really put me back on the path of really loving my job and feeling like I do have the greatest job in the world. Cause for the longest time I'd had always felt that way, but I started building up resentment and feeling like I'm in this space of transition and God just completely changed my environment to allow me to really, you know, love what I do again. And so I feel completely happy with where things are at uh, professionally. And I'm, I'm excited about what's to come because it is something that I'm super passionate about is in the higher education realm. So, um, and then in terms of spending quality time with Amber, we made a plan last Saturday to do absolutely nothing yes and did absolutely (laughs) nothing on saturday um i mean we took care of the animals in the morning um and then we came back inside and just kind of made a small breakfast and then just relaxed for the entire day and it was amazing because for anybody who's ever been a teacher or or anybody who ever works in education in any capacity for you to be able to do that is huge. <laughs> so <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, so that's kind of what's what's happening on my end. Oh, I just want to say that's so wonderful that you love your job like that. And um, you, you find it exciting and um, that you're passionate about it. That That's like something that pretty much everybody would want, but no, don't necessarily find. And so right. I'm just so happy that you're, you have been able to find that in your job. And especially I'm, I'm just really like grateful that you were able to transition smoothly, like, um, following God's, um, direction. And, uh, it just all ended up working out for you. And I totally can relate on the nothingness, like, uh, <laughs> being so busy, it's just, <laughs> and that's really nice that you can share that nothingness with Amber. That's that's very yeah. important. <laughs> yeah. Nothing is my favorite thing. Yeah. I did <laughs> mow the lawn and oh, you know, you're not good at doing nothing. But but for me, oh my gosh, I love mowing the lawn. Oh, okay. I love watching wow. the stuff disappear. And it's this, for me, that's my MMORPG. Uh, <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> how how I'm able to kind of, you know, if, if my controller is my lawnmower and it's one of those electric ones that like automatically goes, I just have to kind of stand there and hang out with it. Uh, 
but oh, a nicely, you know, uh, mowed, mowed lawn and doing the edging on the sides, using the blower to get it all clean. <laughs> Guys, there's something about it. Let me tell you, it's very exciting. Oh <laughs> you know, on, on that note, they have a game called Power Wash Simulator. And they in that game, that. you're just... <laughs> You have some amazing water hose that can get rid of any dirt on anything. And the wow. whole point of the game is to just clean all the dirt off of all these houses, off of all these buildings, business establishments. And yeah, it's really therapeutic. So I can definitely see how uh, mowing the lawn can be like that, especially the way that you described it. <laughs> that would make me feel guilty for not doing that to my own house. So I don't think I could play that. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't think I could. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's go ahead and dive into some church updates. There's a huge one that I wanted to share for anybody who attends Food for Thought every week. This Wednesday... There's no food for thought. There's, it's literally just called four. There's no food. There's no thought. It's just four. Because on Tuesday, like Beth said, Tuesday through Thursday, it's the staff retreat. So the activities that are happening normally uh, on Wednesday are are not. Um, That also includes kids club. No kids club. No kids club. And I assume there's no handbell choir on Wednesday evening because that would also require Dawn. So, oh. so just a heads up for everybody. Um, you know, I was not on choir last Thursday evening, which starts at 6 p.m. until 645 for those that are interested in the church choir. Um, is there choir this thursday or not because i think sorry i think there probably is because we we leave pretty early we leave like at 11 in the morning or something like that okay all right cool so there's choir thursday night that's exciting Um, also for small groups um small groups are still going on there's still time to join Uh, Please be sure to check out the church app to see which ones fit your schedule throughout the week. If Saturday works best for you, you can continue with Kathy on The Chosen, that Bible series. Um, There's a TV show called The Chosen that you will be able to uh, discuss amongst all those that are involved. And it's an incredible series. So I highly encourage you to check that out. Um, I did also want to mention... And maybe this is something our special guest will be able to share with us um, shortly. But there uh, is a lot of stuff going on with the Scouts that I want everybody to be able to um, assist monetarily wherever possible. I know this past Sunday there was an awesome bake sale that took place. So hopefully you all were able to partake in that, buy some yummy nummies. And uh, if you haven't gotten enough... Uh, October 22nd is the men's pancake breakfast, which will take place between services. And that made me think, do we do anything for the women's ministry? Do we do like waffles or like charcuterie boards or what do we do, ladies? Uh, Because (laughs) if the men get pancakes, I want something as well. Is there something that goes on at the church for the women? But I haven't been here long enough to see that. Jessica, we are kind of in between women's ministries right now. And what I mean by that is there used to be an official women's ministry, but people either moved away or passed away, I think. Okay. There's really no official Uh. women's ministry. And as much as I would like to just be in charge of everything at the church, I, I would not. Beth, uh, it's so nice of you for volunteering to take over women's ministry. Thank you, Beth. We really appreciate it. Well, maybe that's something we can pray for, is that if somebody feels that they want to lead something in, in that capacity, that would be awesome. Because I feel like there's so many amazing women at the church. Well, it would be great for us to hang out. Jessica, spoilers. Um, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> Spoiler are- alert. We do. While we do not currently have a women's ministry, I've been talking with a couple ladies about um, getting together 
uh, for a women's retreat again. We haven't done a women's retreat since 2019 because the last one was canceled due to COVID. Yeah. And so we're actually, it's, I think it's the last weekend in April, if I haven't said that already. I think I remember Kathy maybe mentioning that. Oh, yes. Yep. Um, so although there is no women's ministry, there will still be, um, hopefully more opportunities like the women's retreat where we can get okay. together with amazing women. And I've gone, I probably have gone to like three or four of them. I can't remember anymore, but each experience is different, but I love it so much. And being in Wrightwood in the mountains is one of my very favorite things. So there's yeah. no <laughs> ministry yet. Hint, hint, ladies that are listening. Who, who wanna- feels called to serve the women <laughs> of the UMC. <laughs> <laughs> but we're still trying to do the things. Cool. Um, well, I think this is great. So, uh, Tim, hopefully you can take advantage of the pancake breakfast on October 22nd between yeah, services. Jessica, I'm sorry. I have to butt in. It's Kirsten. Everybody can eat the pancakes. It's not just for men. Well, it, it, they need to church. change the branding on that. Let me just say. Okay, I just, I, I felt like you were feeling left out of the pancakes, but everybody can eat the pancakes. It's just that the United Methodist men are on putting three. on the breakfast yeah. and the scouts will actually, the Boy Scouts will actually be helping to serve. This does. Jessica, say. Well, that's exciting. Well, I'm still bringing a fake mustache and okay. I'm there on October 22nd. So last week it didn't, when you said you were bringing, you were going to put on a fake mustache to get some, some of the breakfast. Like it didn't occur to me then that it was because you <laughs> oh. thought you were invited. But then I was thinking it about that over the course of the week. And I was like, I think she thinks she's, we're not allowed to eat the breakfast. But then I didn't say anything to you because I thought the idea of you showing up in a mustache would be so funny. Right. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, that's I all think, I was thinking. I didn't even I think, read anything. Oh, sorry. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I think uh, a stack of paper cutout mustaches should be available <laughs> to all women who would like to participate in the men's pancake breakfast. Jessica, anyway. you know I'm going to make that happen now. That's when it's brilliant. Like, oh, I, I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm That's so okay. happy. It's going to means- happen, and I'm excited. <laughs> You know, now now that we said that, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be like 150 percent more people at the pancake (laughs) breakfast, knowing that they can put on one of those mustaches. Yep. (laughs) Yep. Well, this leads us to you've already got a sneak peek, but I would love for (laughs) Beth to go ahead and introduce our best ministry moment. Okay, I've been working on it a little bit. It is now like three seconds longer okay okay let's hear it it goes the ministry moment the ministry moment this is beth's ministry moment this is not seth's ministry moment this is beth's ministry moment (laughs) and that's it i love it it's just gonna change every time we don't need to professionally record it um i am pleased to introduce my friend who is an award-winning author probably. And she has written such children's books that you might have heard of, uh, Woodwire Wings, A True Wonder, and her latest book, The Fire of Stars. And you can get that wherever books are sold. I have all of them, and they've been autographed by famous author Kristen Larson. Um, But she also (laughs) attends our church, and she is the nicest person you'll ever meet. Um, the fame has not changed her. She's still Jenny from the block. And um, she is here to talk to you about the scouts ministry or the scouts. It's not really a ministry, but welcome, Kristen. Well, I appreciate it. I really appreciate you all having me. Um, it was very great timing. Um, as Jessica mentioned, our scouts are very busy. So we have two groups. Well, actually, we have multiple scout groups that meet at our church, but um, the primary ones are the Cub Scouts, Pack 695. They meet on Friday nights at seven, and that is for um, boys in kindergarten through fifth grade. 
And so the Scouts BSA program, um, they learn a lot of different things. It focuses on like physical health, first aid, they learn um, outdoor skills, they go camping, they go hiking. Um, so that all starts with the, the kids who are um, kindergarten to fifth grade. And then we also have a um, Boy Scout troop that meets Tuesday nights at seven. And that's troop 146. And um, this is sort of like the next level, right? So it's a lot more camping. It's a lot more hiking. And they really learn, you know, life-saving, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, so we have two groups, um, Craig Moles, um, who is in our church is the the best point of contact. He's the scoutmaster for um, the Boy Scout troop. And I think he's still the scoutmaster for the pack. Um, my boys are both in the the Boy Scout troop. So it's been a little bit since we've been with the pack. Um, but they're actually the, you know, through the wonderful generosity of the church, the Boy Scout troop has been working really hard to raise money for their summer camps and for a backpacking trek that some of the boys are going to be doing next summer. And we held a bake sale at the church. And through your amazing generosity, the boys raised over $600. So that was pretty amazing, amazing to help awesome. them fund a lot of these outings. So that was really exciting and we really appreciate it. And then um, the United Methodist Men have invited the scouts to help serve pancakes to people of all genders and backgrounds um, <laughs> at the pancake <laughs> breakfast. Anybody can come and eat. Um, so yeah, that'll be happening on the 22nd. And then actually in a really cool thing, both our Boy Scouts and um, Cub Scouts are doing like a joint camp out where the Boy Scouts are going to show the younger kids how to cook on a camp stove and um, all kinds of fun things. So they're going camping this weekend. So, um, but it's a really great program. I mean, as a parent, um, I feel like the Scouts program helps develop um, kids all around, you know, it's not just outdoor skills. It's also how to balance a checkbook and, you know, why you need home insurance, um, you know, how to plan big projects and execute them. It's a lot of project management. So the, the kids, um, it's a really great program. Um, there are, I just, as a side note, there are scout troops for girls as well. Our church does not have a troop for girls, but we do have girls troops in the Valley. So so if you are interested, um, if you have a young woman who is interested in joining scouts, um, I'm happy to help set her up with the right people that can help her get plugged in. It's a really cool program. And the cutoff age you said was 36. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. I keep thinking like Jessica would be a perfect fit for scouting. Um, yeah. So I would love to be one of those. Well, so you can, so we, we, we need adult leaders, right? So the um, scouts, it's the cutoff is 18, but then when, there are some other scouting programs that go through 21. Um, once you hit 21, then you have to re-register as an adult. And at that point you're a leader, right? So you could be, um, and even some of the 18 plus kids come back, they register as a leader and come back and serve as like assistant scoutmasters and things like that. So it's a really great um, leadership development program. And um, we have just, you know, for as long as we've been at the church, we've had a, we've had scout troops. And so it's the support of our church is pretty incredible for the scouts. So we're just very, very grateful. Yeah. That's so cool. I feel like that was an area of my life I think would have been awesome growing up. Um, even just to be part of Girl Scouts, you know, mainly because they have amazing cookies. And <laughs> let me tell you, yeah. if I could have just been around those cookies all the time, it would have been amazing. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I just I think there's so much that life we I think, you know, I'm not I'm not a parent yet, but I do feel like I can only assume that there's certain things that you'd want to teach your kid that it sometimes is best to like send them off and have somebody and like immerse them in those environments to help them grow. And I feel like, you know, Boy Scouts, you know, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, I feel like all of that are great ways for kids to really just grow up into their own and really learn about themselves and their identity and just who they are as a, as an individual and putting themselves in, in environments that challenge them 
you know, because sometimes doing the dishes doesn't really teach them that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the cool thing is, you know, sometimes you get these um, these bonuses like, um, you know, Finley, Co- Cooper and Finley both have their cookie merit badge. But Finley, like because I have choir now, you know, I've, I'm trying new things. I joined the choir um, and. So it's hard for me to get dinner done and then get to choir on time. So Finley said, mom, I'm going to cook dinner on Thursdays. And so he, you know, he has really gotten interested in cooking and and stepped up, but it all started with him having to learn how to do it for his cooking yeah. merit badge. And he learned wow. all the safety, you know, he learned the safety and all of that and, you know, cooking food to proper temperatures and how not to cut yourself. And um, yeah, so now he's carrying it over into life, which is pretty cool. That's that amazing. Is, yeah, that is really cool. And, you know, there, this is kind of funny, but uh, I always think of like uh, the occasional show where you have somebody who doesn't know how to cook and then they just like burn everything or they create some sort of like not tasteful item and then they want their family to eat it and then the family doesn't want to disappoint them. <laughs> uh, and so they eat it anyway. Uh, and so, yeah, you're, um, you said it was your son. Yeah, 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 it's, it's my yeah, understanding. So yeah, he could totally like avoid that entire scenario. Well, right? Probably his food is delicious. Well, it it <laughs> generally is, but I mean, like we've all made mistakes in cooking, right? Like you you don't right. cook without occasionally having mishaps, right? Like we've had some <laughs> fried chicken that refused to cook, and then you have to like put it in the oven, and you know you figure out how to fix yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Or sometimes you read a recipe that your family's had for a very long time. And instead of a tablespoon of baking soda, you put a cup and, you know, <laughs> sometimes the pumpkin bread doesn't turn out like pumpkin bread. It's just a mess, you know, <laughs> yeah. it happens to the best of us. It does. It right. does. Right. It's like so. a heated up mess, basically. It is. It is. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, I was going to say like, it, but in terms of my life, you all are talking about all these like self-improvement strategies, which I find super impressive. Um, I have been just challenging myself to try new things. So now that my kids are getting a little more self-sufficient, mm-hmm. um, I have always wanted to go back and sing in the choir. And so I am doing it and Yay. it is super fun. I wish I had been able to do it earlier because it's so much fun, mostly because of the cool people in the choir, um, you know, and Don's cool too. If anyway. anyone wants to know who she's talking about, it's predominantly <laughs> me <laughs> and Beth. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> Sometimes um, Tim. I get, it, it looks, it looks, to, it looks to me like all of us here in this podcast episode uh, do venture out to the choir rehearsals yeah. and you may even see us perform uh, yes. on Sundays. Sing a That's little right. something right now on the spot. I'm just kidding. We're not <laughs> going to do that. We, we are not. We, we are, are not. not. <laughs> Besides, it's three altos and a bass. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely something wrong here. Like, that, that's not even working. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I mean, I'm, try- I'm trying new things, right? I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. Um, yeah. I've gone to like a couple of, uh, I'm, I'm a writer, so I mostly work at home alone primarily. Um, but I've like today I was down in LA for a group of writers getting together. Um, so, you know, I'm just trying to get out there a little bit. Yeah. I'm out of my home body existence. I think that's great. Is there anything on your bucket list that you're like, this is something that I really want to do at some point? Is it taking an improv class with Beth? Oh, man. <laughs> Beth, that like terrifies me. I know. It terrifies <laughs> me, too. And like my whole entire being does not want to do it. But that's why I think I have to do it. Ooh, okay. yeah. We could do uh, PUMC improv. Yes. And I, I feel like this podcast is improv. It is. No, <laughs> well, what do you mean? This is all scripted. Yeah, <laughs> like, we scripted like, all this. Indeed. <laughs> this is a scripted <laughs> series. And and an activity that's kind of boring. A play <laughs> and an activity that's kind of boring. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you had me going there, Beth. No, I think we have the excitement here. Um, oh, we're, yeah. we're laughing way too much. In fact, um, people might think that um, they might get the wrong idea that we're having too much fun. Is there such um, a thing as too much fun? I don't it's think like, so. 
too much money being right. too lucky. Yeah, I, I, I love I love that actually. It's it's so know that song? To prioritize fun and uh having too much fun is is part of that. And so when we prioritize fun, it's just it it, it brings our life meaning, you know. I feel yeah. like as a children's ministry director, like that's one of the really cool perks of my job that I do get to prioritize fun like most of the time. Yeah, that's wonderful. So I would love, uh, Kirsten, if you're up for it, I'd love if you could join us for the sermon feedback uh, portion of our uh, world renowned uh, and sought after podcast, if you're interested. Sure. Awesome. So this past Sunday, uh, Pastor Jim hopped right in to what will be a three-part uh, series. we So we went through the first week, really dove into Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Uh, and this past Sunday was a wilderness moment. It was the first installment of, like I said, the three-part series. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts. I know some of it was a little bit uh, there were a lot of facts and a lot of information that, you know, part of the sermon. Um, but I'm curious what what everybody's thoughts were and, and their takeaways with with the sermon. I'll, I'll go first unless someone else wants to go first. Go for it, Tim. OK, so um, my first impression is uh, kind of like we were talking about self-improvement in this podcast. Um, so the interesting um conclusion that pastor jim came to on the uh how jesus did not take any of those temptations from the devil um instead he um held on to what um the father was um uh, what 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 the father set out for him and um i thought that was so interesting in particular uh, the way Pastor Jim uh, didn't necessarily close it, but um, what he followed after, which is um, the angels brought. Um, basically, Pastor Jim pointed out that if if you have the right understanding of it, they 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 basically brought food for Jesus, and um, the angels were there. So, like uh, the devil was tempting Jesus to to drop down so that the angels could pick him uh, right back up before he uh, is dashed against the stones. Uh, and then um, he tempted him with uh, bread as well by uh, changing the rocks uh, into bread. And Jesus did not uh, accept that. And um, that would don't totally test the Lord. Him. So very, very fascinating stuff. So uh, my takeaway, like as far as the self-improvement though, is um, like, I noticed that in my own life, uh, if, if I, uh, hold on to what I know to be true, especially the the spiritual truths that I I happen to come upon in my life. Um, it it tends to work out a lot better than uh, if I was to uh, I guess in this case give into temptation or do the take the easier route to accomplish something. Right. I just noticed right off the top, you know, when he was listing all the movies, I was like, what about a devil wears. Prada. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he did not cover the devil wears Prada. That was a very uh, not necessarily like devil's advocate, but that was one thing I noticed. But I did find a lot of things to be interesting, but also I found myself more so reflecting on moments where I felt temptation or I felt this not this. I don't know if it's presence, but you know, knowing that I'm in a moment, like this pivotal moment where I have to make a decision where I know what God would want me to do. But then there's like this other side where it's like selfishness and all these other things where that, that temptation comes in. Um, that's kind of what it, where I started to reflect a little bit. And I found, you know, nine times out of 10, if, if, if you can trust God and just really lean towards him and especially scripture in times, depending on what kind of temptation you're feeling, you know, God is, is so good at, at allowing you to kind of escape that and, and really redirect. And, um, and so that's one thing I, I think I really just tried focusing on and reflecting on the obedience side of things um, you know, obedience to God. And I know that that's something that Pastor Jim kind of mentioned uh, as well. Then I also thought about and lead us not into temptation, yeah. but deliver us from evil. That's kind of like where 
I started to think about things as well. Yeah. Speaking of the Lord's Prayer, Jessica, I always think back to this, and I'm going to have to study this more now. Um, the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, is actually translated differently depending on what Bible translation you uh, you pick up. I think the most traditional understanding is uh, what we just said, but mm -hmm. um, I think in the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition, it, it's got something like... Um, uh, do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from the evil one. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, it's and and in this case, uh, that Jesus encountered the devil. That was the the uh, the evil one, or or as Pastor Jim said, uh, evil personified. Yeah. Beth, did you have any specific takeaways, or were you also kind of just blown away by all of the information that Pastor Jim had? Because a lot of times I'm just kind of staring and or or I'm like <laughs> listening and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much good information. But I'm like, I'm at capacity. Like, yeah. listen, man, I was good like five minutes ago. There's so much to know. And I'm just like trying to take notes. And I'm like, just give me your sermon notes. I, that's it's gonna be about the best thing I can right. take. <laughs> right. Um yeah, this this week I usually jot down some notes, but today I listened to it. While I was walking the dogs, so I jotted down some mental notes in my yeah. brain. Yes. And, um, one thing that stuck out to me was uh, in the Bible verse, it said Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And then he's, he said something like, and then when it was over, he was famished. And I was like, famished is not a strong enough word for how hungry <laughs> I would be if I fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And then I started thinking like I would be, if there's a word that's above hangry, that's what I would be. And then I started thinking about the Snickers commercials and maybe um, the devil isn't even real. And that's just what Jesus turns into when he's so hangry, when he has to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. So that's, that's really that's interesting. Definitely, uh, that is up for discussion with, uh, you know, those that are part of the church. We will have to, you know, maybe bring that to Pastor Jim and Pastor John. And, then yeah, my, the <laughs> and then my second takeaway was when he was talking about, you know, at the end, what we as Christians can do to stay on the path and to avoid temptation and 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 he was saying stuff like people might be like, oh, well, I'm not going to read the Bible. I don't have time to read the Bible or small groups. I don't have time for small groups. And I realized that um, I signed up for two small groups, the the one for the chosen and that Kathy is leading. And then the lunch church one, the lunch church as March. <laughs> Most normal people pronounce it. Um, so I didn't go to Kathy's Bible study because that was uh, there's quilting. Oh, oh, we should be we should be um, advertising the quilter and crochet shawl ministry group, which meets uh, the first Sunday of every month in the fellowship hall from nine to twelve. Anyway, I started making this bag last September and I was pretty close to finishing it and. I decided if I didn't go to the quilting group this Saturday, I would probably never finish my bag. So I opted to go to the quilting group instead of Kathy's Kathy's um, small group. And yeah. so now I have homework to do. I have to watch it on my own so I can be prepared for next week. And then I completely forgot about lunch church. I think I remembered lunch church when I was sitting around in my house at like 5 p.m. thinking about dinner church. And then I was like, wait, I missed lunch church. So, <laughs> um, the, the things that I could be doing to stay on the path, I either, you know, choose crafts instead or I completely forget about it. So those yeah. were my two big takeaways from this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I think a lot of my thoughts were similar to Tim to Tim's. Um, the The idea that stuck with me is that Jesus was not falling for the shortcuts, right? I mean, yeah. God had a plan for him, and with all of these temptations, 
it wasn't necessarily that, you know, the tempter was presenting him with anything that he, God hadn't told him he was going to get. It was just, you know, the, the temptation to get it right now and to kind of, you know, like, and to get away from any discomfort and take the easy path. And it's, you know, not God's time. It's, you know, my time, right. I say, I'm going to do it now. So, you know, and he wasn't falling for those shortcuts. So I think the idea of shortcuts, um, stuck with me and just this idea of the fact that sometimes we have to live through times of discomfort, you know, when things aren't necessarily going our way, um, that sometimes there's not a shortcut out of that, that we just have to know what God's plan is for us and sit with that and keep, you know, our eyes on him and keep faithful to him and know that, Um, he has a plan for us and that we'll get there, but that we can't necessarily take it into our own hands and make it happen faster. For sure. And that's like something I, I was thinking of in terms of, well, first off, Tim, there's your, that's the instant gratification. Gratification. Yeah. 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 Right there. Yeah. um, In person, you spelled it out. (laughs) uh, But in terms of, you know, personal experiences, I know, Growing up, I was always wanting to have these these certain things, you know, things of the world that my friends had or, um, you know, all I wanted was a MacBook Pro. Right. Like that was the pinnacle of life at the moment for me. Um, And I was like, man, I just want to I just want to be able to get a MacBook. I could record things on there and just, you know, wanted it now, wanted it and. And I could never, I mean, those things are so expensive, especially for somebody just out of high school. You know, it's like, come on. And, you know, it was something that I I knew God knew I wanted that. And that was something I just had always aspired to have something kind of like aspiring to have encyclopedias. But anyways, (laughs) cut to today, I literally have in total, including my work laptop for macbook pros which is crazy <laughs> and, and, and i didn't have to pay for any of them because i went to school and my military benefits paid for two of them and then i went and got my master's degree and they gave me another one and then my work gave me one and it's just like god saying listen be faithful just trust me and i will give you plenty or oh he that is so nice up and he's like you get a laptop you, you know, just like <laughs> everyone and so i mean it's it's so true it's just there's almost like this this joy of sitting in not the misery but just like trying to be patient with things and you're like not seeking that instant gratification of right. all right go ahead turn this stone into bread like you can eat, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's like, sometimes it's nice to just wait and, and earn things that, you know, you've worked so hard for. So absolutely. Yeah. Maybe for you, like I'm, I'm a control freak. Like I, you know, I want to constantly take life into my own hands. (laughs) I'm going to make things happen. I'm going to do what needs to be done. So this, I mean, this really spoke to me because I am, uh, you know, it's very hard for me to be patient and to wait and to let things happen in God's time. So, you know, I was feeling called out by the sermon. But yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say that I agreed with everything that you said about the sermon and how um, everything is in God's timing. And we do still have to suffer and, you know, go through the hard thing before we get to the good part. But I just was also thinking how much that sucks. Right. (laughs) Sometimes if I get, and and I think maybe we were, I think, oh, I think Pastor John was talking. I don't remember if it was on the podcast or not, but I think he was saying that if um, his wife, Cordy, gets too anxious when they're watching a movie or something like that, um, she will look up the ending just so she <laughs> doesn't have to be so anxious while watching the movie. And and that's kind of how I am about things too. Sometimes like I wish that I could just like take a peek 
you know, at the end of my movie life and just make sure that whatever I was stressing out about or, you know, the trial I was going through, that it turned out okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I wanted to chime in on this as well. Um, it's so interesting that we're talking about this at this point in the podcast, because that that's kind of like part of how my week had gone, uh, just to expand a little bit. Um, so like kind of in order for me to like uh, just like the whole, like, I guess, neurodivergent kind of like thing of being able to sit down and focus on something that's really important, but ultimately uncomfortable is for me to just like, even close my eyes and just like, think to myself, okay, like, what is step one, step two, step three, to complete this, and then just just sitting there and accepting that um, I'm going to move forward with um, that, that series of tasks. Um, and then once I actually have that patience to sit there, um, and then I, I just accept basically where God is, is pushing me, what, what direction I'm going, uh, in that regard. Um, then I, I feel like I can, I can actually deal with the discomfort a little bit better. Not, not totally. Like I would much rather just, you know, like play RuneScape or something. No, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, um, so that's, that's certainly like how um, like uh, temptation can speak to me, essentially. I like uh, doing the things that are easier to do and avoiding discomfort um, when I could just hold God's hand, so to speak, and um, do all the things that he's called me to do. Yeah. Man, makes it sound really difficult, Tim. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But I think <laughs> Maybe Tim it's has, like a soap opera or something. But, but Tim has a good point, which is like God holds our hand, right? Like you're oh. holding God's hand, but God is also holding your hand oh. while you're in the midst of doing this really difficult thing, as long as we're mm. faithful. Yeah. Like I think that's I think that's the part that you know sometimes it's easy to forget. It's like, oh wait, I'm not alone in this, right? Yeah. Those are the things he carried us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. That's we just true. have to we just have to pray or, you know, mm-hmm. read his word and Yeah. I think that's why memorizing scripture is so important. And I'll be honest, I am horrible at memorizing things. I wish I could be amazing and just like remember lyrics or remember, just remember things in general. Uh, It's getting worse the older I get, but Alzheimer's, (laughs) (laughs) but I really wish I could, you know, remember scripture the way I used to remember it. And Um, And maybe that's something that I can be in prayer about is that God can teach me to be, well, not to, I don't even know how to say it. Just if I can just try to memorize scripture more often, because in times of temptation, it would be so nice to just recite scripture, you know, and, and, or if I'm in a difficult situation, I'm driving and I need patience with other drivers around me. If there's something I could recite and and just seek God in those moments to calm my spirit, you know. Um I think that would just be so incredible. But yeah, you know, I love that. Start yeah. with the Lord's Prayer because that's got a bit of everything in it. You know? it yeah. Does. yeah. Yeah. I think I think maybe um that would be our first like step of memorization to have the Lord's Prayer just like ready at a moment's notice, you know? Like mm-hmm. Uh, you you have a a time to give God a prayer. You could you could pray the Lord's prayer because we have like six days out of the seven that uh, we may or may not um, give God um, the Lord's prayer, and so uh, that that's certainly something that I I could I could use in my life. Yeah, that's good that you brought that up. I I can relate to that totally. Like memorizing scripture, I think I've had that same desire at that certain point. But for me, it's like just a matter of like sitting down and actually like opening up the scriptures and then finding one that I really like and then actually like memorizing it. So it's like that step-by-step thing I was mentioning. (laughs) (laughs) And you've come full circle. (laughs) I know. (laughs) So I think that kind of leads us into our prayer requests. Um, I'd like to start with our our special guest. Kirsten, do you have any prayer requests for this week? Well, I just think this has been, um, I think coming on this podcast has been so helpful to me because it's like a really busy time of year for my family. And so, and then talking about this particular sermon, I think just, um, 
uh, prayers for patience, you know, never pray for patience. Why? Because then God will throw lots of scenarios at you. No, I don't believe that. With the I don't believe it. I don't believe it. As a person <laughs> with no patience, I believe it. He knows, he already knows that's what I need. He's <laughs> he's been fully aware my entire life. <laughs> right. Hey. For me, Kirsten. Let's go so, back to the previous episode just for a brief moment. Remember <laughs> that God will test us, but he will also provide. That's okay. correct. So no, I'm gonna I'm gonna pray. I'm praying. I'm good. I'm gonna pray for patience because I I I trust. I trust. Good. Well, that, well that's wonderful. You. Yeah. Tim, any prayer requests? Um I delayed think, gratification again? No, no. no, I've given up on that. I'm I'm Don't going ever some... pray for delayed gratification. Just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm like on a path, like you know how you have like um like a path on the uh, the beach, and then you have a path on the pier. I was on the the path on the the pier, but now I'm over by the beach because um, I, I don't want to be over by the pier anymore. No, that, I don't know if that was a good analogy or not. But yeah, um, <laughs> no, just uh, I think a prayer for my follow through on uh, what it's what appears to be some sort of acceptance and commitment ther- therapy. Um, Mm -hmm. basically just accepting what, what I know I need to do to get on track and then committing to the, the next steps associated with that. So, um, anybody praying for me could, um, give me some, um, prayer for, um, giving myself therapy essentially to, uh, follow through on what I'm, what I believe to be true. And then, then just trusting God, um, to, uh, give me that strength to, um, push forward in that way. And yeah, this is not really so much a prayer request, but um, I, I definitely would like to try to be accountable for um, maybe mentioning a scripture that I thought was helpful to me um, or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, next time I uh, get a chance to speak. Okay. That sounds good. I think that's something I'll, I'll want to also kind of try to do is um, try to memorize one verse each week. I think that's, you know, cause I, like I've said before, I like to read one chapter, um, in the Bible, usually in the mornings and kind of do my devotions. And so if I can just pinpoint one verse, you know, that I find to be super helpful, maybe on Mondays and then try to memorize that verse, I think that will be my, my, my goal and my hope to, to continue. But Then also just to follow up with last week's prayer request, just to continue to have, you know, quality time with Amber, because I think that's so important. And um, to just spend quality time with those that that you love, even if it's family, really just finding something that you can do together to um, really uh, let each other know that you care and, and you value the time with one another without phones or technology sometimes. Yes. Beth? So, <clears throat> pardon me. I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Continued prayers <clears throat> for my Jovi and Beth's health journey. Yes. And, Yay. Um, and also, my friend Lucy is having a really hard time right now. Um, she separated from her husband, like, I don't know, a year and a half ago. And um, her, her, ex-husband and the kids moved to to Hatchapi and and she is living on her own right now but she only gets to see the kids like every other weekend so four times a month basically Mm -hmm. and um she's just really struggling she doesn't Mm -hmm. she is going to school but she doesn't know um she's her her lease is up in in four months and she doesn't know like where she's going to live and, and that kind of thing. And she's just having a really, really hard time right now. And, um, related to that, I could use some prayers because, um, I'm a very empathetic person and I just want to help everybody and and make them better and and make it so they're not suffering 
but I know I can't do that. But I also somehow like make their problems my problems. Mm -hmm. And so I would be a terrible therapist because I would take everybody's problems home with me. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I would just be like, how are we going to fix this guy? And yeah. um, yeah. so, I mean, I, I, I recognize that I can't do everything to help everybody. Um, and, and I can only do what I can do. I did tell her that, that she didn't have to worry about our, the son that we have together, who is a dog named Ricky Bobby, and <laughs> we now have shared custody. I told her that um, he always has a place to stay here. So I feel like like that's helpful. But I also feel like I can't be like just up at night worrying about other people's problems. So yeah, yeah. for my friend Lucy and prayers for me that... I can help in the ways that I can help, but it doesn't affect me so strongly. I don't, yeah. I don't know. No, I hear what you're yeah. saying. I, yeah, I can I, totally relate to that actually. Yeah. Cause I, I, I read, she, she posted about her, her struggles on Facebook and I read that and um, I just started crying because I'm also a child of divorce. So, and she was saying that her oldest daughter is having a really hard time with it. And so I'm kind of like putting myself in the place of her daughter and how her daughter must be feeling. And, um, yeah, it yeah. just, I guess what I'm saying is it just feels really heavy to carry. Yeah. Yeah. I think that says a lot about you too, Beth, is that you love so deeply. And I think that is something that anybody who is a friend of Beth is the luckiest person because you care so deeply for your friends. And I think that, you know, the, the first time I met you, I think it was in choir. I just, one, I knew I was in for a ride. But also, <laughs> you were also in for a ride and you didn't even know it. I know. Uh, but, I, but I think that's something so special is that I can, I know if I ever needed something from you or, you know, if something was going on in my life, I knew I could, I knew I can count on you. And I think that's really special. And so I think if you ever feel that way, pray for those people that are on your heart. I think if you can't do anything, yes. I think that's the biggest gift that you can give anybody is, is, you know, is that, so we'll, we'll definitely be, be thinking of Lucy and um, her family and all of that, because um, I'm also a child of divorce, but I'm also, Same. Um, you know, I think that there's something that, we all learn in that. And I'm, I'm, I feel fortunate now, um, having gone through those situations because right. there's so much I've learned and I, I right. love my stepdad. I consider him my dad as well. And he's, he makes my mom so happy and that's, and he's a man of God. And so I'm, you know, I'm just so fortunate for that. Um, but I'm just one person. That's just my yeah. journey. Everybody's journey kind of is different, but, but, um, at the end of the day, God is, God is, has his hand in this. And I think that's one thing to remember. I, I'd like to say the same or not the same, but something similar. Um, yeah, Beth, whenever I talk to you, you're always so friendly and, um, like empathetic. Like I just get this like empathy from you every time I express some sort of like feelings about something. And, um, I can really relate to what you're talking about as far as, um, kind of taking on everybody's like, uh, feelings, um, because you want to try to be as helpful as you can to them. So you kind of want to like empathize with them, but as a result, it kind of like causes you to have, um, some sort of similar kinds of problems. And, um, I, I went through a period of time like that where, um, I was really unstable all the time and, I eventually realized that um, maybe one of the reasons why was that I was putting too much into trying to be helpful for um, mm -hmm. friends that I was talking to. So, yeah, I, I'm just 100 percent there with you. Like it's it's happened to me. It, it, I think it still happens to me. Um, so, 
yeah, I, uh, I definitely like prayers for you. And, um, like, I know you'll still be really helpful to your friends. Um, I, no, no I, matter still what. Want, I still want the empathy. I still want to help other people, but you know, it's finding the balance, right. That's the, the main thing. Um, before right. we before we close today, I did want to mention there's one thing I forgot to say, which is the young adult. Uh, I was going to say young adult youth ministry, but that makes no life sense. groups. Thank you. On the 21st of October, we are going to be doing a half day retreat, and this is for individuals that are between the ages of 18 to. Uh, I think it's 35 is the cutoff, but uh, there anyway, might be some wiggle somehow, room I'm there. still participating. <laughs> and uh, so, but we, we're going to do a half day retreat. We're going to head over to Vasquez Rocks. It's going to be awesome just being able to have a, I think it's going to be a four part series with Pastor John. So if you are interested in this, please contact uh, Pastor John and he will be able to give you more information on where we're meeting on October 21st, which is a Saturday. Um, it's going to be really cool. I love Vasquez rocks. So that was yeah, what, the, I forgot. Oh, Jessica, uh, when in doubt for the audience, uh, call the church office. Yeah. And that number is 661-947-3103. Do, do, do. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed having you today with us, Kirsten. I am excited to see all the things the scouts are going to do. Um, and, you know, if anybody has uh, any questions, please be sure to uh, connect with either Kirsten or you can call the church or go on the church app. And for anybody who wants to donate monetarily to the scouts, uh, Where's a good place we could have them donate? They can give it directly to me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, you'll bring it to the right place. Totally, for sure. <laughs> um, if people want, you know, they can either leave. I, you could send it to the church office. And it's, okay. it's um, for the, the Boy Scout troop. It's um, troop 146. If you're making out a, uh, a check. Making out a check. Okay. Um, but cool. I can also... Um, I can also help connect people um, okay. if, if they want to talk to me directly or Craig Moles and we Person's can help, help get people. Oh, that, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, we even have Zelle. Like we've gotten very advanced. We have oh. Zelle, but not Venmo, but we have Zelle. Well, that's, I mean, that's great though. I think maybe, maybe that's something we can put in, in the church somewhere. Uh, maybe Zelle information and uh, that way we can donate where needed. That yeah. Way. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll have other, I mean, we'll have other activities, right? I mean, cool. we'll have, we'll have other ac activities and opportunities to help our youth. And then we'll also be, you know, helping out at the church, like at the pancake breakfast for everyone. Yay. The men's pancake <laughs> breakfast on October 22nd between services. I do like the alliteration of waffles for women though. I know that does sound oh, pretty awesome. That. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, um, I hope we have the mustaches there. Um, I'm totally the going to the mustaches. Yes. Yep. Yep. It's going to happen. Yes. Appreciate everybody for joining us today. Uh, yeah. Whatever day it is that you're listening to this. Monday, third day, day. <laughs> <laughs> that is all of the days combined. Thank so. you so much, everyone, for listening. And thank you so much, Kirsten, for joining us on our podcast as a guest. Thank you for having me. We're all from different places. We all have different names. No matter what life brings us, Jesus is the same. We're just your Methodist to the madness. Methodist to the madness.